Oh, Brigham. What did you gain on this useless journey? All that we went for. I wouldn't trade that experience with the Prophet for all the wealth of this county. Joseph, the condition of the Saints in Missouri is growing worse. Oh. They're near freezing to death in tents by the Missouri River. And not far from starvation, either. Nevertheless, we still own our lands in Jackson County. And Governor Dunklin seems sympathetic. He's promised to call out the militia to restore our people back to their homes. But he won't leave troops to protect them. He says we have to provide our own guards. Fight them! Oh. Shh. Joseph. We have to help somehow. Brethren, the time has come to do as the Lord has commanded. I will go to Zion and redeem it. I call for the voice of the council to sanction my going. Aye. Aye. Now. You will go with me to Missouri and keep my counsel. I promise you, in the name of the Almighty, that I shall lead you there and back again, and not a hair of your head shall be harmed. Now, who will go with me? When the prophet told us about the revelation to redeem Zion and help the saints who had been forced out of their homes in Missouri, I was just 16 years old, the youngest member of Zion's camp, or so the prophet Joseph called us. After months of recruiting volunteers, we left Kirtland on the 5th of May, 1834. Joseph Smith and Brigham Young led the march. My cousin Jesse and I enjoyed the time together, and with our other cousin, the Prophet Joseph. We also learned from the example of others, like Sylvester Smith, Hebrew C. Kimball, and Barney B. Pratt. God would make us an invincible army. We learned he had something else in mind. Lord's gonna make you a good soldier yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> George. They're already broken in. Thanks. Who even thinks we're going to eat this? Do you believe this? I have I about enough. I'm not going to eat this mess. <laughs> You'll see the movings of the Lord all through this journey. some milk to wash down this rancid mess. Stop your whining. I ain't the only one who has to eat it. I ain't whining, you fool. Hey, hey, hey. Let him go! Let him go! Let him go! Let him go. Hold back! Hold back! How are we supposed to eat this rancid mess? 
Brethren, don't be discouraged about our not having means. We don't even have enough bread. The Lord will provide. Better planning would provide. Brethren, we are united and exercise faith. The Lord has promised to deliver us. But if we don't act like Christians and stop complaining and murmuring, the Lord will punish this camp. From? From the east, sir. Who's leading this camp, boy? Sometimes one. Sometimes another. God of Israel leads the camp. Bad poison. And we have no more fresh water. Did you hear that? There's no more water. No more fresh water! Our plight touched Joseph's sympathy, and he turned to the Lord to deliver us. Some said it was as much a miracle as when Moses smote the rock and water came out. As the Lord lives, this camp will suffer a severe scourge because of wickedness. Now, if you will repent and humble yourselves, the scourge might be lessened, but if not, I say, in the name of the Lord, we will die like sheep with the rot. Fire! Second squad, address! Second squad, ready? Aim! Fire! When we reached Missouri, we practiced military drills and exercises. Joseph also sent Orson Hyde and Parley Pratt to accept the proposal by Governor Dunklin to reinstate the saints in Jackson County. Fearing a civil conflict, however, the governor backed down. 
Nevertheless, we set out hoping to finally reach the oppressed saints in Clay County with supplies. But after crossing the Little Fishing River and before crossing the Big Fishing River, Joseph felt impressed that we should go no further. So we followed the prophet's counsel and set up camp in the fork of these two rivers near a small Baptist church. Intentions are peaceful and honest. Get the bunch of lies! Lies, all of it! You're gonna be dead before the night's through! I got over 300 men coming, and we're gonna slaughter ever last one of you. <laughs> Y'all be in hell by morning! <laughs> Joseph. Yeah. yeah. The Lord will protect us, brethren. Stand still and see the salvation of God. have risen above 40 feet. No one's coming across tonight. Brethren, God is in this storm. The trumpets sound. The army shout. Then we cry the host of hell. How dreadful is our God, our King, the great Emmanuel. Sinners in his with Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of
God turned away the gathering mob with the artillery of heaven. But we soon learned he would not save us from a more deadly enemy, our own contention. That they themselves may be prepared, and that my people may be taught more perfectly, and have experience, and know more perfectly concerning their duty, and the things which I require at their hands. That's correct. Now, go to where I left off. Therefore, it is expedient in me that mine elders should wait for a little season for the redemption of Zion. Wait for a little season. The Lord said he would defend us. And we've already seen his mighty hand lifted in our behalf. Now, the Lord has revealed to me that we will not fight our enemies in Missouri. He will fight our battles for us. We came all this way to turn around and go home. I'm fully satisfied that we have done the will of God and that the Lord has accepted our sacrifice. This whole thing was for nothing? Look, we came to fight, not turn tail and run. Yeah! The scourge of God won't be held back. Joseph's prophetic warning was fulfilled as the predicted scourge swept through the camp, the dreaded cholera. Sixty-eight people were stricken, and fourteen died. of Israel. Jesse? Jesse? Jesse, no! George? <laughs> it should have been me who died. Not Jesse. George. <laughs> Your work is not done. He could have served the church much better than me. You don't know the mind of the Lord in these things, George. <laughs> Not yet. Those who felt that Zion's camp was a failure did not understand the deeper purposes of the Lord. Individual testimonies were tested and strengthened, and it was a time of preparation for the future leaders in the kingdom. Just a few months after returning to Kirtland, 
the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles and the First Quorum of the Seventies were organized. Some of you were angry with me that you did not fight in Missouri. But let me tell you, God did not want you to fight. He could not organize his kingdom with 12 men to open the gospel door to all the nations of the earth and with 70 men under their direction unless he took them from a body of men who had offered their lives and who had made as great a sacrifice as did Abraham. Of the original 12 apostles called by the Lord in this dispensation, nine faithfully endured Zion's camp. All seven presidents of the 70s quorum and every member of that quorum also served on the march. Later in my life, I too was called to be an apostle of the Lord. And I've often pondered what the Lord said. Ye cannot behold with your natural eyes for the present time the design of your God concerning those things which shall come hereafter and the glory which shall follow after much tribulation. Be still and know that I am God. <laughs> 